Alex Collier, Letters from Andromeda, August 1996. The Call to Action. I could see, a new beginning come to me, let me tell you how, how I've lost love, and how I found love, in a world of broken dreams. Julian Lennon and Justin Clayton, Cole Song. For some time now I have been in search of the keys to unlock the truth to how and why I have approached this life so far. During this existence, I have reconnected the truth that consciousness exists beyond our boundaries of this beautiful planet we currently call home. Each of us brings our own personal light and love that offers us the experience to play out life within our combined holographic reality. We now must bring about a new era of purity and peace, so that our true power of emotion can release the love that will ultimately assist all dimensional realities ascend consciously in celebration of the prime creator, the isness. Let us unite in the realization that realities, extraterrestrial and terrestrial, have brought us together here and now. Let our existence validate that we Terrans are a reflection of other galactic races and that we must join in creating the universal truth that we are part of the combined whole that is creation. Let's focus on the idea that we as a human race have been toyed with for some time now and that we have been tricked into thinking patterns that have left us void of true reality. Space does not permit us to go too deeply into the ABCs of why. But the bottom line is that we face in the near future the return, in strength, of regressive beings who consider us their property. With next year's arrival of hale Bop, this truth becomes our new reality if we don't prepare now. Now is the time to make those critical decisions that we all came here for in the first place. Remember, each of us brings with us important keys of knowledge that unfold into endless variations of experience, both realized separately and combined. Our true power is so awesome that those who work to control us are afraid and go about their agenda hidden from us in the shadows. All that is required is a call to action, pulling together all benevolent beings throughout the universe to bring under control those who have deprived us of our free will. Our benevolent friends from distant worlds and realities have come from far off places, and from the future. They have determined that this time frame and sector in the universe is the hinge pin for the anarchy displayed in their current reality. Realize that the concept of linear time involves the past, present and future running concurrently. Those races who are capable of time travel have shared with us that if we can change things here and now, it will greatly alter the future for all concerned. It sounds like a lot for us to bear, but the situation dictates that we must use all our resources and options available to us, if we are to celebrate a victorious outcome. Action speaks louder than words. I have asked myself, how can we go about this? Instinctively, each of us know we have free will of choice. Our ET friends remind us of this every time they state that they cannot intervene on our behalf unless we ask universal law. This is a key, we need to ask for assistance, but not for salvation. We are told that 10% of the world's population must join together in asking. Further, our friends are concerned because of our belief systems, religions, that we just might worship them. They want us to be responsible for ourselves. If we are to work hand in hand with our ET friends, we must learn how to recognize the players so that the proper protocol can be used in successful communications and coordinated efforts by all of us and our ET friends. One of the keys is that collectively we must convey to our ET friends that there are enough of us who realize the consequences to our actions, and that we as our race have no desire for babysitters. We already have more than enough gods to worship, so why would we want more or even new ones? We can use discernment and not look at ETs as gods. Unless they portray themselves to us in that manner, which would be deceitful on their parts. We do have to be aware of infiltrators and wolves in sheep's clothing. Many will see through this. We are creating a movement to find allies, who will stand with us against the aggressors who found ways to skirt universal laws intended to stop such intrusions. In hindsight, the issue is not that we allowed it to happen, but rather we were duped by those who desire enslavement. The problem is that our greedy elite and elected officials do not truly represent the population of the world. It must be our collective free will that rights these wrongs. Here is my proposal. We must start a serious drive getting the message out to our ET friends that we do require their help. Each of us must be responsible to put out the word given freely, from our hearts, of our free will decision to allow them to join us in turning back the darkness that is upon us. We have to do a lot of the work ourselves. We know that there is technology that's been shared by the regressive groups that give our own dark forces an unfair advantage. There are also regressive ETs behind the scenes that should not be here, that prey upon us and our children, while controlling our leaders like puppets, to manipulate us. 
These are some of the reasons that we need assistance. Why? Because now that we have become aware, we need to even the playing field. Our cause is for love to reign supreme, but we just cannot expect others to do all this for us. It's not right. I have always stated to Alex that it pains me to no end that everything is so stacked against us and that we just sit here and do nothing about it. What's worse is that a small minority controls the whole show. We are not sheeple everyone. Snap out of IT now, and do something about IT. Enough of us have ample information to know that we need to act now. I am not advocating that we just go ballistic overnight, but we need to dialogue now, as another means at our disposal. My proposal is to request open full diplomatic relations with our ET friends, so that questions more in nature to the situation can be discussed. While the current information and teaching are a great start, we need more specific information. For example, we need to hear from the Prescience, one of the most recent races to break free. We need to learn how they became enslaved by the regressives and what were the regressives' tactics. And, what was the sequence of events that lead up to the Prescience gaining their liberation? Further, we must embrace races like the Pleiadians so that they can feel more comfortable about our combined past. Why? Because some of them are out there putting their lives on the line for us and we don't have a clue as to the lives that are being transitioned on our behalf. This has all got to stop, and we need to move into a position of responsibility now. I propose that we start networking. That we locate the other Andromedan contactees, as well as, others who have contacts with races that are also involved with the Andromedan Council. These people will be our first wave of ambassadors. They will deliver our proposal so that our ET friends will feel comfortable enough to come down and meet the world's true representatives, the common people, us. It has been a mistake for our ET friends to try and work diplomatically with our elected officials. Our politicians have proven time and again that their allegiance cannot clearly be interpreted as in the world's best interests. If it was, we would have transitioned this world a long time ago. We are the true leaders of this world, each and every loving being upon this planet. I am not saying that our ET friends must contact every person. I am suggesting that more than just the current contactees need to be brought into the bigger scope of events unfolding in this sector of the universe. The more contacted the quicker the network will grow. Holding back from us because of our free will is fine, but once permission is given the playing field changes. We must be presented with other realities so that our choices become focused and we can use our free will more constructively. If we can't meet face to face, then our faith will have to be our strength for us to make free will decisions. I suggest we unite the contactee ambassadors as best we can and start open talks in all directions. Our proposal must be presented to the Andromedan Council. We will encourage physical meetings with what I would term field captains who are aware and loving and who are recognized as common individuals from all over the world. They will establish further dialogue and meeting points with our ET friends. This assures that our planetary regressives have a harder time keeping tabs on the meetings. It is at this level that information will flow to gathering centers where it will be circulated out to all areas of the world. Other field captains will see to the dissemination and circulation of the information. Let me emphasize that each of you receiving this information is a leader. If you believe in the vision of what I am sharing, then you need to go within and focus your intent freely, requesting assistance by those ETs of a benevolent nature to come down and work beside us in turning away the darkness closing in around us. Be sure your focus is that we want them to stand beside us as equals, and that we fully understand that life will change with their acceptance of our request. Once we commit, we cannot stop. Each of us must start organizing others of like mind to duplicate our efforts. You can bet that the regressives have a jump start on us. You need to get out, promote your heart to others and take action now. Time is short. If you are a believer, then it is time to put your belief to the test. Speak your heart and learn to talk your walk. Each of us must do this. From the old to the young, spread the movement. Our ET friends will hear us, that you can count on. If this information has moved you, action speaks volumes. Let us know of your progress, and if you need help. We must all be there for each other, even with thousands of miles between us. This is a call for a global effort of significant proportion. Do it for yourself and the collective whole of this planet, this solar system, and for all those who have come with love in their hearts for our combined collective realities. Love and Light, John Robinson. Vases on the Physiology of Copper. Aboard scout craft hovering over Canada. Please understand this Alex, for the interest of your races, there are basic reasons for your Terran skin tones. 
a blending of light, nutrition, hormones, and your diverse genetics. I struggle to express in your tongue our thoughts of this matter. Progressive loss in stages of molecules of magnesium from your genetic melatonin cells and iron took the place in creating red blood. Now please understand your connection to your physical earth. Your atmosphere is a collection of complex fields. Your magnetic fields vibrate the same as your cells. This is caused by consciousness. All fields are caused by consciousness. Alex, many of your race are sick due to a factor regarding vitamin A and a thyroid hormone. This has caused loss of copper in your bodies and cells. This causes extended problems in your physicality. Some of your races have too much iron in your blood, and the iron mineral will only metabolize if proper balance of copper, vitamin C and your B10 plus 2 and folic acid. Copper as Marini has tutored you as must need it to synthesize your blood hemoglobin. Without proper synthesizing of copper in your blood, production of an and protein synthesis, cellular stability is erratic. This correction will cause longer life in your physicality. Copper mineral declares color of hair and skin in your races. It also will help stop aging and the pull of gravity caused by sunlight. It will be important to remind your races that your physicality is, how do you say, electrical. And, because of your electricity in the body, you also create a magnetic field. The heart, liver, brain, and your nervous systems generate the largest forces of magnetics. Your physicality will protect itself from harmful magnetic influence. Your physical has adapted natural devices to shield magnetic radiation. Copper which is repelling of magnetics in your third density, is lost, your adaptive physicality grew higher. Your heads have strong magnetic flows. Your darker hair types which contain copper and zinc, keeps your heads well protected. Body hair, we have concluded is containing mostly of iron, as your magnetic field is weaker. Your bodies have their own magnetic force. Proper copper balance will maintain grounded body electric. This will protect you from outer magnetic influences. Your magnetic fields are very important to be conscious of. As your created food shortages start, please, be aware that if you could magnetize your seeds and water towards your southern pole, it will create greater growth abundance in chlorophyll, which is important for cell health. Your earth carries a negative magnetic charge, while all the space about you carries positive. We are observing ways to correct this imbalance. I must return you now. We are needed to return. Be at one Alex. Vesay July 1, 1996. History, War and Human Physiology. In your linear time of third density measurement, of 439,231 rotations ago, war on a grave scale occurred in your solar system. This aggression occurred against those on your worlds that include not only you Terrans, but also those called Nibiru. This invasion of your systems of those of Orion, was led by a queen named Suti. This was very destructive on many physicality levels. We will focus most now tonight on your Terran physicality forms. It matters little if those who hear your message do not listen to you Alex. Please share regardless of emotion return to you in challenges. When your science truly remove their own bigotry, they will discover the wisdom of it. Many weapons of destruction of many types of atom splitting have been used. The last grave conflict was most harmful to your Terran form. And is the reason for most of your skin tone races. We shall explain. Orion was and is most interested in the females for your race because of the procreation and genetic strengths. We want you to share that much of your Terran history has been misleading in its truth by those who eventually conquered and control, in your solar system. Nibiru won but only a short battle, before they and other outposts were forced to leave because of genetic damage. Your original races were green-skinned. This was a result we know, because of large copper traces in your Terran 22 blood types. Also, your race's thyroid and pituitary organs were fully functional. The genetic damage to these organs was caused by radioactivity in air and all things of contact. For so many of your tears the air was angry. It caused in your races after the war, genetic memory of these organs being closed and almost atrophied. Your world experienced drastic changes in climate and massive magnetic frequency fluctuations. Your different skin tone races are a result of an edema damage to your blood. It was necessary to create for survival self-sufficient and contained environmental habitats above and below your Terran surface. Much of the fossilization of your Terran remnants is caused by this radiation of your planet, about your star. Your system contained three suns at that time. Only two remain presently. Your physicality in its original form contained a great balance of zinc, copper, magnesium, and iron minerals. 
Your true blood color was green, like your chlorophyll. Some even had a gold tint we have discovered. As such, your physicalities could survive in a high carbon dioxide atmosphere because of the skin color of green. Your stars in your system only effect on your physical form were in the color spectrum of orange, red and blue and green of your suns. Many of your Terran races were stranded in the surface and various districts on your planet. The genetic changes were the result of radiation damage. Your race went from color green, to red, to yellow, to black, then to white. Your white races were considered then to be genetically the weakest. As such, the survivors and descendants of the war were genetically altered and became white through edema. They were persecuted and forced to live underground only to resurface 5,508 rotations ago, to the surface of our world. Discover why your ancients draw green-skinned rulers and kings of your past. The Copper Blood Line is a small race on your world, but it is the strongest genetically. Your native Red Nation race is very strong and easiest to discover and understand. It's the closest to your original form among you. Your physicality had a natural defense to positive and negative frequencies and that was the copper mineral in your blood. This lack of copper in your blood has caused partial loss of brain capacity and nervous system. Remember, your DNA contains cellular memory. It is possible to unlock this memory with the use of minerals such as copper. Your blood systems adapted to iron because of copper depletion due to radiation. We will share more, but we must return to district area now. Be at 1 Alex. Marani July 31, 1996. Current changes in our solar system. The universe is changing, evolving and creating right in front of those of us who are paying attention to what's going on out there. In the next few years, our solar system will discover itself, stretching its boundaries of self-awareness. Conscious life forms will make decisions regarding their motivations, then at some point create a vision of what will best serve their personal agenda, journey or growth. Some of these changes have already occurred on the 9th, 10th, 11th and the new 12th densities. Let us explore one probability of our solar system's future, which also includes us here on Earth. We here on 3rd density are just beginning to experience the feelings of change. We have not yet begun to experience the real movement and display of change in our galaxy as of yet. What will the changes be? How will we experience them, when and how? While these are all good questions, unfortunately, no one has all the answers yet. There is one answer to be considered, that is by the end of October 2013, according to the Andromedan Council, all consciousness will become fourth density. All consciousness that is third density whether it is on this planet or anywhere else in the universe, will be fourth density consciousness. Some of us will be carrying fifth density light bodies, and we will have experienced a natural pole shift on the planet of 70 degrees. It has been said that the new North Pole would be Saudi Arabia. We are about to discover the real power and love of creation, isness, God, generator of dimensions, whatever you choose to call it. What's been discovered and or experienced since March 23, 1994 in our linear time is that the essence that creates energy that we use to create and manifest our belief systems can be found both inside and outside our universe. This is the first time it has been actually discovered by other dimensional beings. The Andromedans and other races are aware of other dimensional universes within our universe, some that are completely physical universes and other dimensional time continuum. They are also aware of their vibratory rate and other basic elements which are completely different than our own universe. All this fits together, so let's break it down and take a closer look. On March 23rd of 1994, 19 suns in our galaxy went through pole shifts. The north and south poles of these particular suns experienced either a 90 degree slip or a 180 degree slip. The Andromedans see this as just a beginning. Out in the universe this event was a very significant event. While it may not seem like a whole lot here just yet, this was the first time this has ever happened, and it all happened at once. Indications that support this are the changes occurring in all the stars that are 8 billion years old or older. They also feel that our suns will experience a pole shift in our near future. Apparently there are things going there, but the specifics have not been shared with me yet. This phenomenon occurred simultaneously with the emanation of a sound and color frequency being carried into the universe from all of the black holes in our known and explored universe. For the first time that's ever been recorded, a sound and color vibration is actually coming out of the black holes. Nothing has ever come out of the black holes. In fact, they crush and pulverize any form of energy or light whatsoever. While they are still doing that, at the same time, 
sound and color vibrations is coming out. What is even more mystifying is that this frequency is coded with program data that is affecting all of the energy frequencies and dimensions in the universe. According the Andromedans, there are 11 prime creational emanations in our universe. There are also evolutionary densities within each of the prime creational densities. Apparently, what is happening is that this new vibration, this twelfth, is coming in and it is connecting in a very different way, all of the densities all the way down. Instead of your having to change your physical form to evolve into another form that is totally different for that particular density, my understanding is that based on their preliminary finding, certain souls will literally be able to walk into the next density, instead of having to change the physical form or the makeup. This frequency carries the color of aquamarine on our third density level, and another color on the other dimensional levels. Evidence of this may be witnessed very soon when the rains begin and the rainbows appear. According to the Andromedans, we will start to see the color aquamarine on our rainbows, so watch for this. Even though this frequency is only one color and one sound, it's different on every other dimension. The encoded frequency carries, from the Andromedan perspective, profound wisdom and change. In other words, prepare for a huge consciousness leap. It is coming whether we are ready or not. It's coming and it is out of everybody else's hands, as well. They are about to experience the same things, maybe in different ways, but they are about to experience them. What will this consciousness leap really be like? How will we know that it has happened to us? Besides has said that it will be an awareness. It will be sudden to some and complete in its effect. A lifting of the veil will occur and you will remember your true essence. You will suddenly know everything. To others, it will be experienced and expressed differently. For some it will be slow, and suddenly they will realize that painting has been on the wall for two years, or the color of their car is white. Little things that suddenly they just become aware of in their environment. What has been observed thus far is that this particular emanation coming from the black hole is a holograph that is reintegrating present dimensional levels into a new frequency pattern. A lot of this sounds scientific, but that's how they, the Andromedans, talk sometime. The Andromedans are just now observing the changes on their level of consciousness, which are the levels 3 through 6. They are just beginning to feel the changes there. The same holographic frequency carries a different color to each dimension, as well as maintaining its new color integrity. The other colors here, what is here I do not know, it is not something that I can describe. My own personal experience, traveling with them is that once you go into 4th density, 5th density, everything different. Totally different. There are colors there that cannot be described, our language here is extremely limited in dealing with the realities that are waiting for us when we make this leap. So it will be the first day of school all over again. The energy or frequency is consciously magnetic. In that as it continues to form and build its polarity, it is drawing the existing primary densities up to it. In other words, the single frequency is responsible for the conscious evolvement of all life on all present dimensional levels. It is drawing everything up to it. It contains profound awareness, it is starting to filter down into the lower levels of our densities. It has apparently changed the awareness level of the 11th, 10th and 9th densities radically, in a very short time. This new density also carries individual conscious awareness. New souls have appeared developed and awareness beyond anything known in our universe. A lot of this information comes from dimensional beings higher that are talking with the Andromedans, because the Andromedans can't be there for themselves to see it. These new souls have not made contact with any beings on any density as of yet. They are in an observational mode. They may be the real first angels of our universe. There is no name given to them as of yet, because nobody knows what they are. They haven't attached anything to them yet, as far as a label, or a symbol, or anything. Because of this new frequency evolvement of all consciousness has been sped up tenfold from its normal evolvement state. A lot of you are experiencing things just moving very quickly on all kinds of different levels. This frequency does not carry a balance of positive and negative polarities. This fact implies a specific purpose and direction. What that exactly is at present is unknown. All that is known is that everything is being drawn up into a higher consciousness almost overnight. In their terms overnight, to us years, because things move a lot slower here. This shift, or ascension, for a lack of a better word, is occurring at four other universes at the same time and in similar fashion. Completely different physical universe are experiencing the same thing. We on the Earth are going to become much more aware of how unique our planet is in our galaxy. 
we are all going to receive an increase of awareness on our individual environments. Many people will feel a very strong impulse to leave the cities and move into rural areas. When I was given this information, I was given the rest of this, and it is predominantly about us, based on the fact that everything has been sped up. We are all about to discover who we really are. Not only true spiritual being of essence, by also our physicalness. We are all experiencing in some form the pressures of crisis both inside us and around the world. We are in a time or period of technological leaps and discoveries beyond our wildest dreams. We are also experiencing philosophical understanding which will result in the change of all of the world's religions to a very personal relationship with self, nature, and creation. We have also created an ecological disaster that is absolutely going to require the attention of everyone in order to pull it through. This will help to unite most of the common man with the good of humanity. Why are all of these happening at the same time? Part of it has to do with the changes we've already discussed. But also, the fact remains that it is time for humanity to leap on a conscious level. It was time anyway. We were moving in that direction anyway, long before this started to occur. So we can't blame it on anything else, it was happening anyway. It's just now that someone has pushed the accelerator for us. Our physical form has been holding us back because of misplaced genetic coding or manipulation done to us hundreds of thousands of years ago by extraterrestrials for Orion and Draconis. No folks, they tell if just the way it is, so take if, if it feels right, great, if it doesn't, you can put it on the shelf or something. It's time to grow, now. In fact, yesterday it was time to grow. Planetarily speaking, our growth has been on hold by forces that fear change. That's our present government, that's the Orion group which are a group of extraterrestrials, the Greys, Dao and Draconis. They have literally been holding this planet back, not only this one, but 21 others in our galaxy who are having to deal with the same kind of garbage that we have been dealing with. Who are just now beginning to find out, on some level, about how much they have been manipulated as well. So we are not the only ones. This is the restlessness that we all feel. Most are experiencing feelings and are seeing that our religious systems, political, as well as social and economic systems have not really evolved individually or interactively with each other to the point where they are serving the purpose for which they were created. In other words, we are seeing a lot of things simply falling apart. And particularly in our country you are seeing our government just throwing money at it. But that's not going to fix it. And actually is making it worse. Instead of reorganizing it and spending the time to figure out what the needs of the people are, they are just throwing more money at it, and saying that'll fix it. And it's happening all over the world. On different levels. We all know we need to cooperate together as a global family. But we are very suspicious of all leadership of this global government and or family. And very well we should be. It cannot be trusted. What is in place now absolutely cannot be trusted. We as a race in the most fundamental way, are going to experience the most all-encompassing perception and understanding of who we are as individuals and as a global race. In other words, big shifts are coming. Big shifts, that are going to totally change our perspectives on how we look at ourselves, how we look at our day-to-day -day lives, to look at what we are doing with our lives, what our goals are, everything is going to change. Radically, and in a very short time period. What will this awareness be? It will be an awareness that in our efforts to always strive forward and create technology, comfort, and advertised packaged answers for all of our problems, we ran over our past on a freeway of ridicule and contempt, an enduring suppression of our ancient legends and myths. We could not know where we are going unless we can fully appreciate where we've been. And there is so much denial apparently on where we've been that that's one of the reasons we are lost as a society. Because it does not fix the control patterns or program patterns of those in control here. In other words, if it empowers us not them. It is time that our past as a planetary race was genetically created by extraterrestrial races. To shed light on all contradiction that we find in our ancient history and on our present identity 